First of all, I'm going to caveat this week's Ultra X Speaker Challenge um, with a slight, I'm not really sure that this is the right solution, but it produces something that looks similar enough to the desired output that hopefully it's right. Um, I don't really understand, I'm no biologist, I don't really understand why you'd want to uh, create this visualisation, but uh, I've managed to do so nonetheless. So if we look at our input data, it's got all these lists of um, genetic codes um, and stuff like that. From my understanding, it doesn't really matter, these numbers don't matter, the spaces between them don't matter, but kind of the order that they are appearing to us here does matter. So if we use a data cleanse tool just to get rid of the spaces and the numbers, um, then we get what we have below. Now online, in the explanation of the solution, it says that this output here has 178 columns, and I see no reason why to go away from what they've done. Um, at the moment, these strings are 60 characters long, so it's clear that we're kind of going to need to split them all up into individual rows and then um, attach column and row numbers to them. So that's what we'll do via a little bit of regex, just say for anything, tokenize it, split it out to a row so that each letter has its own uh, row. And that obviously gives us quite a lot of rows at the moment. So then to create the column numbers, we want these column numbers to go from 1 to 78. Um, I usually do this by just, first of all, assigning a record ID, um, which will obviously go 1 to this uh, 29,903. Um, but then I use uh, a modulus formula to turn that into 1 to 78 instead. Um, naturally, it starts at a 1, and then when it hits 78, it goes back to 0. So I like to just add in the if statement, you know, um, that when it's a 0, we actually want it to be 178 in this case. If I just scroll down to the 178 to show you what I mean, that might be clearer. So there you go. Um, it's just kind of restarting to 1 once it hits 178. So that's all good there, that's how we've got our column numbers. Then we kind of want to create the row numbers so that it batches up each of these 1 to 78 chunks. Um, so we do that with a multi-row formula uh, that looks at, um, say we're here, our value at the moment in the column field is 178. If we look to the row above, then it is greater than the row above, therefore it's part of the same group, it's kind of in ascending order. Whereas if we were here, then um, number one is not greater than 178, therefore it's clear we've started a new group, so we'd be on a new row, and therefore we've added one to the previous row. So that's how we get our row numbers and our column numbers, and you may have noticed within here, then I also have another little sneaky formula hiding, and that's just taking the origin and giving it a numerical value, because when you're trying to colour a heat map in Alteryx, you can't do that unless it's a numeric field. Um, so you could have, instead of using character to int as a formula, you could have uh, done if statement to say like, oh, if it's an A, give it a 1, if it's a T, give it a 2, something like that. But I'm not sure if I'm correct, but it seems like any number is fine uh, for the purposes of the visualisation, just as long as it's distinct for each uh, letter. So the only thing that's left to do is to build that heat map then. And we do that via the interactive chart tool in the reporting um, section. We just have our x um, axis as our columns, our y axis as our rows, um, and this z is what we colour it by. So that's to number here, because if we had the origin, we just get nothing. So we change it to, to number. And as you saw at the beginning of this video, it kind of, even though it doesn't look right here, it does look right afterwards, which I don't really understand why, in all honesty. Um, but maybe because this is kind of showing a sample at the moment, I'm not sure. Um, so the only things I did to change this at all from the default was just kind of remove the titles and the display range, that sort of thing. Uh, put that onto automatic, um, hid all the lines if I could, hid the labels, that sort of thing, and just chose uh, how I wanted my colour scale to be. Um, by clicking on this, and it gives you all sorts of different options. I was in the categorical because I didn't think it should be um, a sequential or anything like that. So hopefully this is an example of how to take a data set that you're not really familiar with, not really sure if you're doing the right things to, 
And uh, I guess if this were work that I was doing for a client, I'd be able to check back with them. But hopefully this is good enough. So thanks for watching.